Hey YouTube, Ethan here. I'm going to be covering Atmos suits and Oxygen Not Included, and this video is going to be aimed primarily towards beginners. As with all my videos that are aimed towards new players or beginners for Oxygen Not Included, I'm only going to show you the very rudimentary steps that are needed for setting up Atmos suits and to get it functioning in your base. I'm going to be covering how you can set up Atmos suits as quickly as possible so you can get your duplicates out of your starting biome and get them exploring the rest of your asteroid. I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be able to learn how to set up your Atmos suits and your docking systems with as little infrastructure investment as possible so your colony can be more efficient at expanding throughout your playthrough. Now, as with all the beginner-friendly designs that I have on my channel, there's going to be a lot of room for improvements. So if you're a more experienced player watching this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments about how these builds can be improved. The primary goal of this video is to help somebody out who has never set up Atmos suits before or who struggles to maintain the proper levels of oxygen needed to keep them full or who may not understand all the game mechanics that are required for Atmos suits to be fully useful for them. So even if you're a more experienced player, keep watching and let me know if you learned something or if you have any advice for this build that I'm about to show you or for new players that are just starting out. So first of all, what are Atmos suits and why do we need them? Atmos suits allow your duplicates to work in environments such as George here, who's working in a room that is completely filled with natural gas. He's not affected at all by the heat or lack of oxygen in his environment. Essentially, Atmos suits allow your duplicates to be productive when there is no breathable oxygen available for them, and when the temperature ranges are either too cold or way too hot. If he tried to operate this metal refinery without an Atmos suit, he'd be holding his breath, and he'd constantly have to leave this chamber in order to catch his breath back where the polluted oxygen is, just beyond the liquid lock. Duplicants normally can't work in hotter environments that are more than 73 degrees Celsius because they will get the scolding debuff. With an Atmos suit, they can work up to 10 times that temperature, up to 727 degrees, as opposed to just 73 degrees. Atmos suits also hold 75 grams of oxygen that generally lasts for about 1.25 cycles. So with these benefits, they can effectively explore almost all of the entire asteroid that you start on with the exception of directly being in contact with molten magma, molten gold, iron, or copper. So it is definitely worth rushing for them as early as you possibly can. It's also important to start setting up the infrastructure for Atmo suits before you even unlock them on the tech tree. This is because Atmo suits require 300 kilograms of copper, aluminum, or iron and need two reed fibers in order to create just one Atmo suit. In order to start planning for Atmo suits before you even have them, it's a good idea to have a rock crusher and start producing refined metals and also finding your thimble reeds as early as you can when you first start your asteroid. They're usually just outside of your starting biome. You can plant your thimble reeds in hydroponic farms and connect your early game lavatories and sinks into them. And this will allow you to grow reed fibers early on in the game passively and stock up enough so when you finally have Atmos suits available, you can start building them without having to wait for the reed fibers. Now, Atmos suits aren't 100% perfect. Your duplicates will have minus six athletics while they are wearing the Atmos suits. And this will re be reduced to zero if they have the exosuit training skill. Atmos suits also lose durability at a rate of 10% per cycle when they are being worn. And they will have to be repaired. And lastly, Duplicants can make a mess inside their Atmos suits if they cannot reach the bathroom in time. When this happens, they will spill polluted water all over the Atmos suit dock where they take their Atmos suits off when they finally get back into your main base. For this reason, it is important that any new duplicants that you take on are not tasked with going too far outside of your base in their Atmos suits because they will already be slow as it is from being a new duplicant and the minus six athletic trait that they take on when they're wearing their Atmos suit will slow them down quite significantly to the point where they may not be able to get back in time for their break to use the bathroom. So keep this in mind if you take on new duplicants and you are tasking them to go outside of your main base by using Atmos suits. Now, a fun fact about Atmos suits is that your duplicants can eat, shower, and also use the lavatories while they are wearing them. So it is possible and viable to have your duplicants put on your Atmos suits as soon as they wake up in the morning and do their entire daily tasks while they're in your Atmos suits. So now that we got the basics of Atmos suits out of the way, let's get into how to build them when you're first starting your colony. I'm on my sandbox map here called the Sandbox Asteroid, where I do my demonstrations for videos. Getting to this part is fairly straightforward, but how exactly do you get your Atmos suits to be functional for your duplicates to use? Let's take a look at this setup. Each Atmos suit dock is going to require 120 watts of power. 
And the only other requirement is oxygen. And this requirement can be a little bit tricky. So first let's discuss the early game oxygen production. The easiest way to produce oxygen for your atmosphere docks is to have as many oxygen diffusers as you can working all at the same time and having a gas pump installed right next to them. You can enhance this method farther by blocking this off which will prevent the oxygen that's in excess from escaping this region and it will help keep this area fully pressurized so the gas pump is always sending full packets of oxygen. You definitely want a gas filter no matter what. This is the simplest gas filter to set up which has three terminals, an input, an output, and a filtered output. In this case, you would select the oxygen as your filtered output and plumb it into your Atmosuit docks. There's another much more efficient way, as this gas filter requires 120 watts of power to use constantly. The slightly more advanced method, but a much more cost-efficient method in terms of power, is the gas shutoff. Let's take a look at how this works. So the plumbing is very similar, we're sending oxygen into the gas shutoff and our gas pipe element sensor when it's detecting oxygen will send a green signal to the gas shutoff allowing the oxygen to pass through the gas shutoff and into your atmosphere dock. It must be noted that the gas pipe element sensor must be installed on the gas pipe and right before the intake terminal for the gas shutoff. This is because this gas pipe element sensor is only detecting the contents of the gas pipe that it is currently installed on top of. And for the simulation, I'm going to introduce some carbon dioxide so you can see this working. So when the carbon dioxide passes the gas element sensor, it sends a red signal to the shutoff. This means that when the gas shutoff is turned off by the automation, and it will bypass the intake, so the carbon dioxide will never make it into your Mosuit docks. The reason to use this slightly more complicated method is that it is 10 times more efficient to use than the gas filter. This only consumes 10 watts of power, and it's only consuming power when it's active. When it's shut off, because this is detecting the wrong element, this will not consume any power at all. That being said, if you prefer the simplicity of the gas filter, feel free to use that instead. When the atmosphere docks are full, they will not accept any more oxygen until the atmosphere have become used and they need to be refilled. So what I'll generally do is install a gas reservoir to act as a buffer. This gas reservoir can hold extra oxygen for you, just in case your system goes down. You could also set up a notifier with an automation cable hooked up to the gas reservoir to send you an alert just in case this gets below a certain threshold. This is not directly related in setting up your atmosphere dock, but it's just a tidbit to help you out in the long run. Now let's do the same thing and try to supply our atmosphere docks with electrolyzers. This is the far more common setup when you get to your mid-game state of the colony, and I'm going to show you this setup in my regrettable boro base, which I've been working on for over 700 cycles. Okay, welcome back to the regrettable burrow. And this is my main colony that I've been working on for over 700 cycles. In this case, I'm using electrolyzers to supply my entire base with oxygen. And this is also supplying all of my ammo suits as well. Now this is a slightly more complicated setup and this entire build right here has its own video. There's quite a lot going on here, so I'll just briefly gloss over it. The electrolyzers are going to produce hydrogen, gas, and oxygen. Each are going to be at a very high temperature that I don't want to feed directly into my base. Obviously the hydrogen gas is going to be stored elsewhere for the time being until I'm ready to use it. But the oxygen is also very hot. This is almost 80 degrees Celsius, so I have to find a way to cool that. And that's what this cooling station is for. This is a dedicated cooling chamber solely purposed for cooling the oxygen that is headed into my base. The oxygen enters at around 80 degrees Celsius and leaves at around 16 to 18 degrees. I have a cooling chamber with an aqua tuner that is cooling the polluted water in this chamber. And this is the plumbing overlay. This is a similar setup that I used in my Taming Metal Volcanoes video, so if you need to set this up, refer to that video on how to set up a cooling chamber. It looks a little bit different than something like this, but realistically, 
the setup is just rearranged and instead of cooling water i'm cooling metal tiles so that video has a very good explanation on how to set up a cooling chamber just like this one and here's an overlay of my ventilation pipe plumbing layout I have several branches where the gas reservoirs are being filled up to fill the atmosu docks. And I have a number of high pressure gas vents throughout my base, which just supply oxygen to the general surrounding areas. Again, I'm using two gas reservoirs and this just acts as a buffer in case something in my colony breaks. I don't want my duplicants to not have a way out of my main base if they have to venture out into the rest of the asteroid. So those are the basics of how to set up your atmosu docks and how to supply them with clean oxygen. I hope this video has been helpful, and if it has, please let me know in the comments. Or any questions, please feel free to leave them below, and I'll try to help you out. Until next time, this is Ethan, and I'll talk to you guys later.